It's our dear friend of the show who's been here since the beginning. It's Aton Burnett. I'm so excited to ask you some in-depth questions. Let's do it. I know you and your work ethic. With you, I actually really want to expose how damn hard you work. Thank you. I mean, it's crazy, Aton. Yes, I've, I've, one of my biggest things I've worked on this year has been work-life balance. I do not usually have that. I like to film in the morning, so like I'll start filming around like 5.30, film for a while in the morning, and then I used to work till 11 p.m. Let me tell you, that's not healthy. So I've been out working on working till like six and try to have a fun night after, but it's definitely a lot of, a lot of work goes behind. How content. long did it take you to sense burnout and go, I do need balance. I think recently, one thing I've been working on is trying to figure out to prioritize my time. Okay, what do I need to do? What can I, what can I have other people help me do? I think burnout's real. No, even no matter how much you love something, if you do it too much, you're gonna get burnt out. So I think that was something that was important and just kind of making that shift. You are a very smart, savvy creator. Thank do you, you have any advice for someone who might be watching about process, channels, what is some advice? I always try to think about like as if I'm the audience. Like, so if I'm creating content for TikTok, I'm like, okay, what is, what am I wanna watch if I'm on TikTok? TikTok, the audience sways younger. If I'm doing for Facebook, okay, it's an older audience. If I'm doing for Instagram, it's more kind of like a wide gamut of an audience. And just thinking about like, if I'm the audience, what do I wanna see? So it's a Sunday morning, what type of recipe do I want that day? What's my attention span as the audience? Sometimes, you know, the audience can sit down, watch an hour long Drew Barrymore show. Sometimes they can watch a 15 second TikTok. And yep. I think just trying to figure out like, what do people want to see? What's their attention span? It's really important. And then how can I best like entertain them? And I think my biggest advice is just planning. Every little aspect of what I do, I try to plan. And if things are planned, calendar blocked, set yourself deadlines. I think it's a lot of times in social media, since you're your own boss, it's important to set deadlines. How did you figure out how to angle your camera and do your editing style because I feel like you were very original, fresh, and first to bat with that type of style. Yeah. How did it come to you? When I started on TikTok, I was one of the first food creators on there, so you kind of really had to invent the wheel. And I think for me, I tried to think about like, what, what is the most captivating? On TikTok, you have such a short attention span. You know, people are there scrolling on a train, and they're at their doctor's office, and they're bad. Like, they don't, they don't want to sit there for a while. So I'm like, all right, what is the fastest way I can show them something, the most compelling way, the most dynamic? I'll place my phone down, and then I'll grate the cheese over the phone on falling onto the cheese and you get that like cascading shot. Today I'm showing you how to make the world's cheesiest mac and cheese. So I was just thinking like what's the most dynamic way you know I only have a few seconds to entertain someone so I just want to entertain, educate, and have fun in the process. When you think people have short attention span, let's keep it at the portal, TikTok, they're in a cab, subway, doctor's office, how do you understand that on a tactical level, but not take it personally, emotionally. Oh yeah. It's definitely times when you go in the analytics and you're like, okay, people only watched eight seconds of this, like the average view time, let's say was set 10 seconds of this 15 second video. You're like, wait, what, what about the other five? Like I worked on those. But I think it's just important to know, like even prioritize, okay, what, a lot of times in a recipe, I'll look at a recipe and maybe when I write down the recipe, I tell you to do A first and then B and then C. But in the video, I know that B is the most interesting. So I'll actually try to figure out how I can move B to the beginning, get that most interesting, compelling part and just kind of do it sometimes a little backwards for the mm -hmm. video, just so that people are entertained and kind of get that engaged. Let me ask you a few advice questions for people out there. If you see a bad comment, what do you do? Okay, so this is something that I feel really passionate about. And I think because I've been doing this since I was 12, and I'm sure you could probably relate, you've been doing it since you were younger. Um, whenever you're in the public eye or people are watching you or you're doing something out of the norm, people have opinions. And the way I think about it as someone who works in social media is negative comments pay the bills. Haters pay the bills, that's what I always say. Haters are the ones who comment, the right paragraphs, telling you how horrible you are. And I'll tell you this, the Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube algorithms, they don't know what the people are saying. They just know they're saying it, and then they're interested and they show it to more people. So, haters pay the bills, that's what I say. I love that! It's true. Oh. Oh, and they're your biggest fans because they will watch every single video you post so they can hate on it and they just help you. <laughs> See, I just stay away from the comments. <laughs> and I learned to do that as a kid because you're, people were like, don't read the reviews. Yeah. Because it's just like social media training. You are going to get half that are positive, half that are negative. The middle people just, they don't count. They don't care enough to comment. And then what is the validation? You're basically at zero. It's a fine line between, you know, like, 
filtering out the haters and being able to be open and take like real criticism. Haters make you is one of my favorite things I've ever heard because I want people to find a strength and a sense of humor about the fact that it's almost a guarantee you're going to get 50% like and dislike. Yeah. And there's no end game, which is something I think also. You're like in a constant like competition with yourself. There's no like, oh, I hit a million followers. I won. Great. Like there's always more, always more you could do. So it's also important just like make sure you're happy that you're like, you're enjoying the process, not the end goal because there is no end goal. Well, work hard, play hard yes. actually. And I certainly did for a long time. <laughs> Fantastic advice, Aton. As usual, you remain my hero, Thank you. my dear friend. And I'm just so glad that we found each other. I mean, yes. I really have been doing this show with you since the very beginning yes. and I want to ride into the sunset. I'm here. Yes. Love you. Love you too. Oh, thank you, Aton. Thank you.